Hello everybody and today it is time to do an update on the TBR card. So currently in total there are 20 books on my TBR. Some of them are not physical so in total there will be less books on this particular shelf. There are more because there are library books on there and my entire December wrap up is on here waiting for me to finally film it. But um, in terms of like what's part of my TBR that's more or less what's on there. Let's check out the age of the books that are on there. So at this point in time, as I said, there are 20 books on there and the oldest one will be um, one on my April TBR, which is Unwell Women by Eleanor Cleghorn. And this one is on there for 328 days. So this needs to be read not yet even within the next month, but I will be reading it in April. But so this is a nonfiction about our healthcare system and about how our healthcare system, you know, systematically kind of um, ignores the needs of women or doesn't take the needs of women seriously. And so how women have been done a disservice by the medical field for a very long time. So, And then the youngest book on my TBR at this moment in time is only four days old, we will get to it later, and the average time that these books have been on my TBR is 183 days. So let's just start with the books that are actually on my April TBR, if they were like lying somewhere else, so that's easier. So next we have To Shape a Dragon's Bread by Monikeel Blackhoose. This is also on my April TBR, as I just said. This is part of my read-along for uh, dragon-based books. And so this one is about a young indigenous woman who enters a colonizer run Dragon Academy and quickly finds herself at odds with the approved way of doing things in the first book of a brilliant new fantasy series, which I like because that means that I gave the right explanation for this book in my April TBR. Uh, so yeah, this one is being read within April as well. And then we have The Girl from the Sea by Molly Ofter Nofter Nox Molly Knox Ostertag. So this is a graphic novel. It is a queer graphic novel, a coming of age story about two girls that meet one another by the sea, I think, or like one comes from the sea or something like that. Uh, and you know, this one also on the April TBR. And the final thing that like physically comes off of this shelf that is on my April TBR is Kindred by Octavia Butler. This is the only book on my April TBR that I have as an audiobook at this point in time. And so it's definitely the first one that I've picked up off of that TBR. So yeah, that is definitely also getting read. And I'm really wondering like, is there something on my screen or what? Or... Ah, okay, no. <laughs> yeah, I see like a bar on there, but it's, it's apparently like... I see a bar in front of my face, but it's apparently just like a setting, a display setting apparently at the moment. But so, yeah, Kindred is a sci-fi novel written by Octavia E. Butler. This is a story of a woman who basically travels back in time and saves a young boy, but then it turns out that she's basically traveled back to slavery era uh, US. And so this is a very dangerous situation for her to be in because she is a black woman. And this is not a very nice time period for her to be in. Uh, I just started this one two chapters in liking it already uh, and I'm eager to see where this is going to go. Next up let's start at the bottom which only has one other book and that is Magba by Tora Horsjersdottir which is a book that I was gifted by Diana through the um, Secret Santa on the channel of Jolene and this one is a book about domestic violence I believe. It is a Icelandic novel and I had like been eyeing this for years and I'm eager that you know I will be reading it before December at least because that's the deadline for this particular book. Then one of the other sort of like more recent acquisitions, so this is also a Christmas gift, is The Will of the Many by James Eilington. So this is a sort of Greek Empire inspired um, fantasy novel. I believe it has something, let's reread the synopsis actually because it's been a while and I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be picking it up like anytime soon so I might as well read it now because I'll forget it by the time that I actually picked it up. At the elite Ketanon Academy, a young fugitive uncovers layered mysteries and world-changing secrets in this new fantasy series by internationally best-selling author of the Lycanus trilogy, James Eilington. Audi Vidae The Ketanon Republic, 
also known as the hierarchy, may rule the world now, but they do not know everything. I tell them my name is Vis Telemus. I tell them I was orphaned after a tragic accident three years ago, and that good fortune alone has led to my acceptance into their most pre prestigious school. I tell them that once I graduate, I will gladly join the rest of civilized society in allowing my strength, my drive, and my focus, what they call will, to be leached away and added to the power of those above me, as millions already do as all must eventually do. I tell them that I belong and they believe me, but the truth is that I have been sent to the academy to find answers, to solve a murder, to search for an ancient weapon, to uncover secrets that may tear the Republic apart, and that I will never ever cede my will to the empire that executed my family. To survive though, I will still have to rise through the academy's ranks, I will have to smile and make friends and pretend to be one of them and win. Because if I cannot, then those who want to control me, who know my real name, will no longer have any use for me. And if the hierarchy finds out who I truly am, they will kill me. So the one thing that worries me about this is this sort of line of like, um, I've been sent to solve a murder. I do not care about murder mystery plots, but this sort of like, magic school set up this sort of like hierarchical society and like breaking the establishment and stuff like that does sound really good and i uh, have really really loved james Ellington's like Kenya's trilogy so i'm only expecting great things from this another highly anticipated read is blood over bright haven by ml wong this is a fantasy book a fantasy standalone this is the author of the sort of Kaigen, which was a really great read that I absolutely adore, one of my favorite fantasies. And so this one, I believe, is also somewhat of an academ academic setting. So magic has made the city of Tyron an industrial utopia, but magic has a cost and the collectors have come calling. An orphan since the age of four, Skyona has always had more to prove than her fellow students. For 20 years, she has devoted every waking moment to the study of magic, fueled by a mad desire to achieve the impossible, to be the first one ever admitted to the high magistrate. When she finally claws her way up the ranks to become a high mage, however, she finds that her challenges have just begun as her new colleagues will stop at nothing to let her know she is unwelcome, beginning with giving her a janitor instead of a qualified lab assistant. What neither Skyona nor her peers realize is that her taciturn assistant was once more than a janitor. Before he mopped floors for the mages, Tomil was a nomadic hunter from beyond Tyrant's magical barrier. Ten years have passed since he survived the perilous crosses, crossing that killed his family, but working for a high mage, he sees the opportunity to finally understand the forces that decimated his tribe, drove him from his homeland, and keep the Turanish in power. Through their factitious relationship, mage and outsider uncover an ancient secret that could change the course of magic forever, if it doesn't get them killed first. Skyona has defined her life by the pursuit of truth, but how much is one's truth worth with the fate of civilization in the balance? Then, we have one that I'm not really excited about. This is Defiance, the final book in the Skyward series by Brandon Sanderson. Uh, I absolutely adored the first book. So Skyward is a book in which we are looking at this young girl called... What is her name? Stella? No, something like that. Spensa. <laughs> it's a young girl called Spensa who basically is an outcast in this society because her father was like a super popular uh, hero within the society until one day he kind of, um, you know, how did he, beca he became branded as a traitor because he abandoned the mission and so she has been like branded a traitor's She's been, and so she, and so his bad reputation has kind of, she's associated, and so she's kind of associated with his bad reputation, but she really wants to step into her father's footsteps and become a fighter, fighter pilot, however, because of her father's reputation, nobody's really willing to give her a chance. First book, five stars. Second book, not as great, but hey, it was still okay. Third book, whoa. I, such a disappointment uh, and so I've really at that point in time was unsure whether I wanted to even continue I'm still unsure but you know like the series is almost done I want I just wanted it to be over with um, but yeah this one I, I'm looking for the moment I kind of want to you know find a moment in which I'm I'm positive about picking this up rather than just considering it like you know want to tick off 
And then we have two books in the same series and I will be starting my read for this one in uh, next month. So in May I will be starting my reread of the first book to then dive into these two and that is And the Liars Not by M.A. Carrick and Labyrinth's Heart by M.A. Carrick. So this is the series it's called the Rook and Rose series and this is a series set in a sort of like Phoenician type fantasy city and we are following a girl who's trying to swindle her way into a um, rich family not knowing that that family actually is in financial difficulties. There's also a sort of like Robin Hood type character you know one robbing the rich in order to help the poor uh, and the uncovering of his identity is a big part of book one. Uh, this one also has sort of like dream magic. I really enjoyed book one and I'm very eager to finally get around to continuing uh, with this series and another series to continue would be the Oleander Sword, second book in the Burning Kingdom I think the series is called or the Burning Empire the Burning Kingdoms. So this is a Indian inspired series in which we are looking, in the first one at least, we are following this sort of like outcast princess who um, has basically been put in some sort of a, a gilded cage, let's say, by her brother who considers her to be a little bit of a rival potentially for his throne. Uh, and then we are following a second character which there will be a queer relationship between the two of them and she has a mysterious past that we're uncovering throughout the book. And then the final one for this shelf is also a recent acquisition. This is Faye Bounds by Sarah El Arifi. Sarah El Arifi is the author of the Final Strive. I'm trying to think of the series, the Ending Fire trilogy. Uh, this last book in that one will also come out this year. This I don't actually know too much about except that it is Faye <laughs> book, but and I don't, haven't consumed many, if any, fey literature. Uh, I'm not really that interested in it, but I'm interested in Sarah El Arifi, so I'm hoping that I will really enjoy this one. All right, let's continue this like, oh, climb to the top. Let's put these books back in. All right, most recent acquisition is an Illumicrate book, and that is Phantom Folk by Elisa Chan. With any luck, I can potentially still pick it up this in April, but that depends on finishing my ambitious April TBR, so who knows? Uh, and all I really know about this is that it features underwater <laughs> magic. But I will actually also read out this synopsis, because why not? Um, Welcome to Chen Kaui, shining pearl of human civilization and a safe haven for those fleeing civil unrest. Or at least that's how it first appeared. But in the semi-flooded city, humans are quite literally on top, peering down from shining towers and aerial walkways on the fathom folk. Sirens, sea reaches, kelpies and kappas who live in the polluted waters below. For half siren Mira, promotion to captain of promotion to captain of the border guard means an opportunity to help her downtrodden people. But if earning the trust and respect of her human colleagues wasn't hard enough, everything Mira has worked towards is put in jeopardy when Nami, a know-it-all water dragon, phantom folk royalty, is exiled to the city. When extremists sabotage the annual boat race, violence erupts, as does a clamdown on Phantom Folk rights. Both Nami and Mira must decide if the cost of change is worth paying or if Chen Kaiwi should be left to drown. Then we have Inkblood Sister Scribe by Emma Tors, Watchstones Edition. This one is a book about a magical sort of like book collection and this family that our protagonist is a part of is basically the protectors of this collection and somebody's out to find these books to find this library and to use its knowledge for probably bad purposes and let's end with two more illumicrate books of which i actually don't really remember what they're about so we have the principle of moments by esme Jikemi pearson this is the december illumicrate and this is a book that Oh, I think I've already read the synopsis one. Yeah, probably when I got the Illumicrate Recreate box. Um, so it's taking place over two timelines, it seems. Like one is in the year 6066 and the other is in the year 1812. 1666, in Emperor Trasin's brave new galaxy, humans are not citizens but indentured laborers, working to repay the debt they unwittingly incurred when they settled on Gahran, a desert planet already owned by the Emperor himself. 
As Shai Kim Daly knows, she is just another voiceless cog working the assembly lines that fuel his vast imperial war machine. Her only rebellion? Studying stolen aer aeronautics manuals in the dead of night. But then a cloaked stranger arrives to deliver an important message and her life changes in an instant. 1812. Obi Amadi is done with time traveling. Never mind the fact he doesn't know how to cure himself of the temporal sickness he caught whilst anchoring his soul to Regency London the one that unmakes him further with every jump, or if the prince he loves will ever love him back, or why his father disappeared. He is done, until he hears about the ghost of a girl in the British Museum, a girl from another time. When Obi's path tangles with Asha's and a prophecy awakens in the cold darkness of space, they must voyage through the stars, raging against time, racing against time, tyranny, and the legacy of three heroes from an ancient religion who may be awakening, reincarnated in ways beyond comprehension. So, mix between sci-fi and fantasy. And then the final book is the June Illumicrate, Sun and the Void by Gabriela Romero La Cruz, also a beautiful edition. And um, I actually have heard not that great things about it, um, but let's check it out again. Reina is desperate, stuck living on the edge of society. Her only salvation lies in an invitation from a grandmother she's never known. But the journey is dangerous and prayer can't always avert disaster. Attacked by creatures, that, by creatures that stalk the region, Reyna is on the verge of death until her grandmother, a dark sorceress, intervenes. Now dependent on the Doña's magic for her life, Reyna will do anything to earn and keep her favor. Even the bidding of an ancient god who whispers to her at night. Eva Casare is unwanted, illegitimate and of mixed heritage. Eva is her family's shame. She tries her best to be perfect and to hide her oddities, but Eva is hiding a secret. Magic calls to her. Eva knows she should fight the temptation. Magic is the sign of the dark god and using it is punishable by death. Yet it's hard to deny power when it has always been denied to you. Eva is walking a dangerous path, one that gets stranger every day, and in the end she'll become something she never imagined. Doesn't really say me, tell me too much, uh, but I do like that idea of like, um, you know, forbidden magic. You know, I, I kind of, like I don't like, but <laughs> I like exploring this sort of like, um, dynamic of people telling you like you shouldn't use magic because magic is evil and then somebody going out and using magic uh, regardless you know i like that sort of like religious undertones i guess of like you know the devil aside from that i also have some ebooks that count for this tbr so i have two books by joao f silva so seeds of war and then the uh, prequel novella which i think is called runes of smoke um i don't really know too much about it i have started it yesterday but uh, i cannot really tell you much about the premise of that in that one chapter that i read yesterday and then I have the two secret novellas by Brandon Sanderson, so I have Yumi and the Nightmare Painter and The Sunlit Man still to go. And as far as I'm aware, that should be everything that I have at the moment. Yeah. That's my physical TBR at this point in time. Let me know what most appeals to you on this collection at this point in time. And yeah, I'll check in with you guys for a future video. Bye!